So we're going to start coding. So visit this link right here to start coding, makecode.mindstorms.com. So it'll take us to this page and you can see that I've already made some projects here for the next couple days that we're going to be programming. Um, but once you click on the link, you'll be taking to a site that looks like this. And in order to start coding, you have to start a new project. So let's click on this. Once you start a new project, and once this loads, you can see that there's already two starting blocks. Today, we're not going to be using the forever block. We'll talk about that tomorrow, but we're only going to be using the on start block. So there's also a co colorful menu on the side, as you can see here, that's labeled with many different functions such as brick, motors, and music. And we talked about those today. So we'll only be using these three today to do some basic program. So let's go through them. So first, there's brick. And as I said earlier, you can change the buttons, which are these main things on the brick. You can change what shows up on the screen. And you can show some cool things like ports, battery level. So basically, to, for, for, to start, we're going to be showing a simple face on the screen. So we can do something like show mood and how you program is in this start block. This is like the starting point. This is what happens immediately when you press the play. So we're going to put show mood underneath here. So it becomes a part of the starting block. and it's already started, but we're going to hold on for just a second. So, you can pick a mood by pressing on the face right here. So let's say we want the robot to be hmm, having heart eyes, love. So if we want that to play, to st that on start when we press play, it's going to show the love mood. We have to go down to here and you see where this button is that says start the simulator. We press on that. And the robot immediately shows love. So using that brick bar and changing the screen using one of these manipulation blocks and putting it into start, you can start a program. So I did that a little bit quick, but you start the program by pressing that green arrow and then you press the same button to stop the program. So that's really important to know because you have to make sure that your program, you're actually starting your program, otherwise you might think that it's not working. But you have, this menu right here is really, really important. So next we're going to go into motors. So this one's a little bit more complicated. We're only going to stay in this move area because there's other motors that can do other things, but we're only going to stay in here. So like I said before, there is individual motor movement, there's tank motor movement, and there's steering motor movement. So to make one motor move, you look at where it says it only specifies one motor. So we're going to drag this top one underneath. And right now we don't have any motors linked up, but once we start the program they'll show. And keep in mind this is not how the robot will look in real life. It'll be more compact, but when you're programming, this helps you see clearly what's going on. So we want to run a large motor, and these are the motor ports. These are the sensor ports. Keep that in mind. So your motor ports will have letters. So we want to learn our large motor A. There's many sizes of motors, but we're going to do large for driving at, oh, there's a percentage. So that percentage is really important. That's how fast your motor is going to be running. So we'll stick at 50% right now. When it's a positive number, when it's plus 50%, it's not negative, it's positive. That means that your motor is going to run forward. So this is the cool part right here. You can decide if you want your motor to run in rotations, degrees, seconds, and milliseconds. And this can be used if you are if you just want to go forward for a really long time, you can have it go for seconds. Or if you want a precise number, you can do rotations or degrees. So right now, we're going to start at seconds. And you have to change this number to actually give it a number value. So we're going to run this right now. And 
Also keep in mind this plus button right here opens up the amount that the robot will actually run for, so that's important to note. And we're just going to press the start the simulator button and see what it does. So we saw that this motor popped up and it ran for two seconds, which is exactly what we wanted. So that's how you make only one motor run. So we can take these out right now because we're not going to use them and we'll go back to motors. So next, let's make, let's practice what tank drive is. So it's a lot easier because it says tank motors right here. But right now we only have a motor. So we for tank and for steering, you need two motors. So we can change the combinations of motors. And right now, because we don't have an actual robot on us, you can do different combinations. But we used A last time, so let's do A and B for the second one. And like I said, pow this percentage means power. So you can make two motors run at different powers, and that'll make the robot turn because one motor is running harder than the other motor is, but for now, we just want the robot to tank forward, so we're gonna have them go at the same at the same power. And this time, instead of, instead of seconds, we're gonna do rotations. So rotations basically means that one rotation is one complete turn of the wheel. So that's like 360 degrees turn of the wheel. So one full turn is one rotation. So we're going to do rotations and let's do one for now. So it's not a guaranteed seconds, it's not a guaranteed degrees, but we know that that motor right here is going to turn for one rotation. And there's going to be a second motor that pops up that's going to turn for one rotation at the same time. So let's start this program and see what happens. So just like we said, both motors A and B popped up and they only turned for one rotation. If you were watching that, you can watch it back. It turned for one rotation, this red part right here. So next, we're gonna make, we're gonna practice steering the motors. So steering's a little bit different because as we said before, it's all about direction. It's not about like a tank where your two motors run forward. Uh, together or run backwards together. So right now we have motors A and B just like last time and the big thing about steering is that there's a turn ratio which is this arrow right here. So that essentially when you slide it back and forth you see what direction the robot is going to go at when you're steering it. It's just like a steering wheel. So if we want it to go let's say right We'll just do 45 or 48 right now. It's going to go right. So we can keep the speed the same. And this time, let's do rotations like last time. So last time we did one rotation, we saw it only rotated once. This time, let's do two rotations and see what happens. So we're going to watch that one more time, but you could see that one was going a little bit faster than the other to make a turn, which means that it's still turning at the same speed, like it's going in the overall same speed, but one motor, like a car, one is one part of the car is going faster than another part of the car to make the turn. So let's watch that again. This one's going much faster than A is going much faster than B, so that's what steering does. Now, though, we need to practice what going backwards looks like. So let's do tank. So when you want to make something go backwards, instead of having positive powers, you basically have, and you can also click on it to drag a menu, you can have negative powers. So negative powers make it go backwards. And let's practice what degrees are. So before this, we talked about rotations, which is one complete turn of the red part of the motor. Degrees is basically the, each of the degrees or the little fractions in that turn. So in one rotation, there is 360 degrees. 
it's kind of like if you're jumping in a circle, a complete circle is a 360 degree turn. So if we want to do degrees, which is very precise, it's going to give us the exact amount of how much that red part is going to turn. So 360 degrees would be just like one rotation. So this time, the red parts are going to spin the other way and go for 360 degrees. So let's see what that looks like. So we saw that they spun the other way this time, which was different than last time. So that's how you make motors go backwards. And our last section right here is a sound effect. So there's multiple sound effects that you can do and because it's on start, meaning the second you, pr you play the program, it'll make a sound effect right away. So a basic sound effect that we can do is playing an animal sound effect. So when we press play, the robot is going to make a cat noise. So I'm not sure if you heard that, but it'll make a purring noise. And that's just a fun way that you can make the robot into an animal, kind of. Or when it's running, after it finishes going forward or backwards or turning, it can make a sound effect saying that the program is done. So the last thing that's really important is exiting the program, which is in the brick area right here. Exiting the program basically tells the program, once I do this thing that's before exiting the program, I'm done. So this kind of helps because you don't have to press this button over and over again. So it just did that. And that's a great extra tip. You don't always have to use it. Um, but if you're making really, really, really long programs, you might use it. So if you want to go back and rewatch some parts um, to make your own programs, you can do that. We're going to go back to the presentation real quick.